Uh, all right, this is Julian Nitzberg on WithoutYourHead.com, and I think they're talking about the head of your penis, as far as I understand. So. This is Nasty Neil here at the station of Decapitation, Without Your Head, and I'm joined by Michael Cooney, the writer of Six Souls, which is currently on video on demand and will be in theaters April 5th. Uh, would you like to give everyone just like a brief synopsis of uh, what the movie's about? I'm sure it's um, always with, with the thrillers I write that there's what it appears to be about, and then as the movie evolves, what it is actually about. What it appears to be about is a um, is a patient who is suffering from uh, disassociated identity disorder or multiple personality disorder, and there is a a father and a daughter. The daughter is, is played by Julianne Moore and the father is Jeffrey DeMunn, and they are both uh, psychiatrists who have different views on multiple personalities, simply as the, um, the father believes they're real and bona fide, and Julianne Moore plays Dr. Kara Jessup, who has made her livelihood disproving them. And so there is this family struggle that this patient is placed between, uh, played, I think, quite brilliantly by Jonathan Rhys Myers, who plays several personalities. But as the story evolves, uh, Julianne Moore begins to realize that the several of the characters uh, portrayed by Jonathan were in fact real people and were, were murder victims. And so there appears to be more going on. And as it evolves, there starts to be a, a supernatural air that comes in and not wanting to, to spoil the twist but hopefully it gets rather dark and spooky from there on. Yeah, I, w I just watched it earlier today, and I, I really love the movie. And that always, oh, thank I, you. You're welcome. And uh, I always like those kind of movies where um, it's kind of um, science versus uh, religion or science against um, supernatural, and at some point uh, the science, you know, break, uh, gives in and starts to, you know, there's something yeah. here that, that I don't understand. What I always uh, like to do is, uh, in, in a totally manipulative way as a writer, I, and it's always difficult because you, you know there's going to be a trailer that, that's going to go out there and actually say to the audience, well, in fact, this is spooky. But in an ideal world, I, I'd have some poor unsuspecting soul go, oh, lovely, Julianne Moore, Jonathan Rhys Myers, and a thriller, that sounds lovely. <laughs> and they'd sit down to watch it and go, oh, yes, I see, this will work, multiple personalities, very good. <laughs> and after 20 minutes or so, they go, oh dear, this isn't the sort of movie I thought. This is much spookier than I thought it was. I'm watching the wrong film. Oh dear, oh dear, but I want to know what happens. And so that's, you, you want to lull people in that you're going to get this psychological drama. And then the, the spookiness of it uh, comes in when it's too late and they can't leave the theater or turn the DVD off. Yeah. Uh, I That's funny you bring that up because I always think about that too. It's so, so often like a movie like... If you didn't know anything of what it was about, and you would just go into it like cold, you uh, you know all these little things would would work better for you, or you know you probably enjoy the movie more. Not just this yeah, one, but just in general. Because what happened? Yeah, that happens when you write the script. This was a spec. This was a, uh, an original idea of mine, and so that that's the that is the purest. Uh, sort of uh, absorption of the story that you can give to someone it, it is when they read that spec and they haven't been told anything about it, they've just got a, a title to work from and they haven't seen a trailer, they don't know what actor or actress is going to play the roles, and you are spoon-feeding the story. That That is the moment, of course, that the writer is in complete control as if you were writing a novel that you're ha you're, you are delivering the story exactly as you intended. And it was interesting. I, I've, written, I, I've written different thrillers. This script is the only script. I've written 25, 30 things, some of which have been made, some of which haven't. But this script was the only script I've ever written that truly scared people in the read. We have a, a, a doctor friend. And I was handing the script out to friends to read, as I do. And she said she started to read it, and she had to put the script down and wait till her husband came home. There was something in the script that was spooky. And it, it, the, the script has evolved quite a bit um, from when it first sold. There was a couple of different companies worked on it, and a couple of different producers had their sort of input into it. So it did definitely evolve. 
but that that first read, there was something as, as if the actual screenplay was haunted. It was quite delicious seeing the reactions of people reading that script. Yeah, when you started telling me a story, I was like, as the writer of it, that has to that really has to be special for you to, to get that that reaction from from the people reading it. Yes, yes, and then and then it was nice. It was I. I, I my sort of claim to fame was uh, that's 10 years ago now. It was a film called Identity. I don't know if people have seen Identity, but it's, it's, um, it's, it's another, it's a more, that's another fun thing. It is a fun thriller. It's not that uh, Identity is different from uh, Six Souls. Mm. I keep calling it Shelter in the back of my head because that was when I wrote the spec. That's what it was. Um, but Six Souls is a, is, a, is a creepier, more unsettling piece, where Identity was a fun piece. And it is. It's a, it, it, it was uh, it, uh, it was called Shelter at the time. Sold uh, quite quickly after Identity, and so it, it was lovely seeing that reaction um, to, to the screenplay. Absolutely. Yeah, I don't want to spoil Identity if anyone never has, no one's ever seen it before. But I also really like sure. Identity. But a similar uh, similar theme there with the multiple personality at some point. Um, is that something that yeah. really interests you? It, it, it is. I mean, and shelter is actually a direct result of identity. When I was writing identity, uh, I, I did as much research as I could and read papers and different points of, of view on it and trying to... What's missing from the, the, the movie of identity is there was a, a bit more science that was eventually cut out of it, of, of what, how actually, without spoiling the twist, how it was operating. There, there was some actual science of how a brain could tell that a healthy brain tells the difference between a uh, a memory and a dream there is a, a chemical i can't remember now it's 10 years ago there is a uh, there is a chemical reason how the brain can tell the difference between a memory and a dream and that this was how i was that, that's what i was using in identity in in the research for identity what one soon discovers on, on wikipedia is that not too long ago, the, um, the diagnosis for someone suffering from those, those traits of multiple personalities was possession by demon. And this is not, seriously, not too long ago that people, and it was the ritualai Romani, the exorcism for possessions, and that's how it was dealt with. And of course, that didn't work for identity, but that always sort of stuck with me. And I thought, well, wouldn't it? I wonder if there's a story where maybe we shouldn't have abandoned, you know, quote unquote, supernatural elements of it in favor of our modern science. And then you go, well, okay, so what sort of character do I need? I want someone, I want someone who doesn't believe in multiple. And then, then you sort of start to piece together, and the the story of six souls, where and that's where it came from, is from my research into identity. Yeah. That's really fascinating because, you know, even like the cliche, you're battling demons, had to start somewhere. And before people understand yes. this kind of stuff, you know, you're battling. Like if you have alcoholism, whatever, it is like battling a demon that you can't, you can't help yourself, you're possessed. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, you said you researched, uh, you know, the science and everything. And, and that's why I really liked about this movie was um, Julianne Moore's, uh, her doctor, was really believable. In all her, you know, trying to, to find out if this guy really had this and she was really against all this. And that really helps when the movie takes the twist and the supernatural because at some point it's really realistic and then it takes the supernatural twist. Yes, and you want this. The Duane plays this character who so staunchly believes in the science of it that it's like the Roadrunner cartoon that runs off the edge of the cliff. And before they know, they'll actually run off the end of the cliff, which is what one hopes that both Julianne and the audience does, is, is they, they so believe in, in her character and as she believes in, in her science, that she's able to take them off the edge of the cliff, as it were, and that that's the moment when you realize, oh dear, we're in this sort of spooky movie, at the same point that Julianne does, but now it's it's too late, and she's put everyone she loves in danger. Mm -hmm. And the the, ca the whole cast is amazing. And you know what's that like for you as a writer to see you know something you you've written up there, you know, envision you know for everyone to see. It's 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 a thrill. Then look what I asked Jonathan Reese Myers to do. It's all very well writing half a dozen different characters and. You, you know, I have the time to make up the different characters and the different... But, 
but just see someone have to perform that and on the set shoot it one way as one character and the other way as the other character. He worked so hard. He, he, crea- he worked with voice coaches, dialect coaches, and created entire histories for each of those characters as if each of the characters w- had their own movies. So he worked uh, on six movies. He worked uh, as, as hard as Mom would on six. He's a wonderful, earnest actor. And I, I, I think he pulled off because there, there, there could be sort of the tendency of the, 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 to make it theatrical, which I don't think he does. I think he, it's, it's a subtle performance. And the more you know about what he was doing, the, the more you see he does this one, one of the characters has tension in his shoulders and you can see it, that, that he's got tight shoulders as well. And he pulls that throughout however many weeks of filming it was. And then I think does it beautifully. Yeah. You yourself, uh, which side would you be on? You know, uh, are you more person believes in science, or do you believe in the, the concept of a soul? And... Well, oh gosh, that's probably on the spot. <laughs> I, I'm I, wh- one of the reasons I enjoyed writing this is because I I I am conflicted, which I think is a good position to be. I, I'm I'm conflicted in, in in faith. I'm conflicted with with science. I love science. I'm a I'm a geek and a nerd, and at school that's what I did in the math. So th- I've got that side of me, and yet I've had experiences in my life that I cannot explain. Uh, there's been supernatural things that have happened that, I know it sounds like uh, <laughs> a science can't explain, but I did, it's, it's absolutely true. Uh, there's, there's been things, strange things that, happen that I cannot explain. Mm-hmm. So I, I, think, I think most people, this is why people like multiple personality stories is that most people have multiple personalities. I don't think anyone is one personality. I think people, uh, just as I'm different on this phone call to you as I'm going to be with my kids later today, people are different in different situations. And I think people hold, I think a healthy mind can hold different thoughts in their same time, conflicting right. views in their head at the same time. Yeah. I agree totally. And another uh, movie of yours uh, that, you, that you wrote is totally different from these other ones is Drag Frost and myself. Also yeah. big, I'm also a big fan of Drag Frost. So. Oh, no, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun. It I, fun. I, look, I loved making Jack Frost. It, they, you know, the pair of them, it, it was a blast. Um, mm. I'm you know, so proud of my little no budget movies. They, they, they're, they're, um, and there's lots of drinking games you can play with them, which makes them even better, I think. Yeah, yeah. We did uh, for for Christmas on our website, 13 Dark Days of Christmas, kind of the kind of like the 12 Days of Christmas. Bit. We counted down movies, and Jack Frost was on my list. One of my favorite. Uh... Oh, thank you. I love it. Yeah. I love it. It's, I want... it. it's fun. Yeah. It's, I want... When I'm trying to impress people, I I'll, I'll pull out Identity and, and Six Souls, and then. Once they get me, I go, go, now here's what I think is really fun. They'll be like, you're crazy. Yep, that's a snowman in the bathtub. That's right. <laughs> oh, my favorite scene, my favorite scene. <laughs> well, I want to thank you for talking to me, and everyone should definitely check out Six Souls. It's going to be in theaters April 5th. And um, anything you'd like to tell everybody out there before I let you go? No, I just I, I hope they enjoy the movie. Let's get the word out there that it's going to be in the theaters. And it looks beautiful on the big screen. It, it was shot line of Saints from it shot it beautifully, and the director did a great job. So spread the word. Tweet it out there. How you doing there? This is Lachlan Monroe, and I have my hat on, but you're listening to WithoutYourHead.com.